Lightning seems to strike, said Franklin. Uh, every time the bells are ringing. <laughs> One would think it was time for a new trick. <laughs> Something that works, maybe. Maybe it's science. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's the lightning conductor. We've forgotten. People don't know. They don't realize that. Trees set were on fire and people died lots of times. Penicillin, this fantastic molecule. Blood poisoning, this girl would have died in 1942. Just imagine if a, a priest or someone at Lourdes could do this. That would be a miracle, and it would cause something throughout the world. This is a true miracle work, work. Norman Heatley, one of my heroes. Unknown, he didn't get the Nobel Prize. He actually did all the experiments to develop penicillin. Let's go on, because what's going on? I've shown you things from the Internet already. There's been a discussion uh, and, and God exists, according to the Royal Society, this analysis um, basically strongly disagree, uh, 63, 78.5 in a personal God. These are the statistics in belief in supernatural being. Well, let's get out of that and basically look at the NAS study. Basically, 90% uh, pronounce that they don't believe, 95% of biologists in the National Academy of Sciences. Now... You've actually seen something which I was going to show, and I'm going to analyze it for you. Basically, the, it's the Templeton com conversation, does the universe have a purpose? The big questions conducted amongst leading scientists and scholars, and here it is, we've already seen. Okay, unlikely, Peter, no. Well, basically, that's no, okay? And these are more, oh, maybe I wrote it down, I can't remember. Unlikely, no, I was said, let's see, unlikely, not sure, perhaps, Yes, uh, no, no, uh, um, let me see, uh, I hope so, and yes, 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 okay. Now, it's interesting to actually juxtapose that against the Royal Society one, okay. Basically, the Templeton have not done anything like a scientific analysis of the situation. They've chosen who they want, and basically 50% of them have all said yes, whereas if you go into the Royal Society survey for what it's worth, it's Basically, uh, 70 to 80 percent, and I think nearly 90 percent are don't believe it. I challenge the Templeton Foundation to pay for the advertising of the Royal Society analysis, pay for a new NAS survey, and publish it in all the major newspapers, and put their mouth where their money would be, and announce once and for all that the consensus of the vast majority. 90% of those with the greatest expertise in assessing evidence find no evidence whatsoever for so-called spiritual realities, which, of course, is an oxymoron. And then use their vast financial resources to do something worthwhile. I, that'll be the day. Okay, so basically, uh, I think, uh, I, you, let me just go on because uh, we've got zipped out of it, which I shouldn't have done, which is here. Uh, okay, under threat. I'm going to the last part of my talk. There's a miasma of anti-critical thinking in the media. It's unbelievable. Sam has pointed out that Bill Moyers has these people coming together to try to reconcile Genesis with the life in the modern world. Well, what can you get on the internet? Well, this is on there in YouTube, and I hope you'll watch it. Right. <laughs> yeah, she's nice. well, I actually, it was interesting to me that I don't know if, if, wasn't there something in the Constitution, I, I don't know sound I'm still studying, but isn't there something about the separation of church and state? So therefore... Uh, we got rid of that. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe that the, the, the elected officials would try and practice that themselves then, no. maybe on a uh, separation no, no, of church No, 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 to, to no. To even win a nomination in this country, you have to say you're a person of great faith. You have to pledge the people out there that you put your faith in things that are unprovable. Uh -huh. That you suspend wow. critical oh, thinking as the way to go. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't really believe that. Have you ever watched my show? And you know I do believe that. Okay. But I mean, you see, you know, okay. you know, you know, you know, you know, okay. But I mean, you say that I thought he, I thought when you, you went straight, all of this was going to change. Oh, I thought, oh, oh, oh. When you got cured of your gayness, I thought but, this was going to snap right out. Of you. Uh, but do you realize that in the fifties, the Mormons preached that the only way a black man could yep. get into heaven was as a slave. That's right. It's now, true. first of all, why you need a slave in heaven, I don't understand. I thought heaven, everything was good. It's everything also, never... it's not heaven if you're the slave, is it? I mean, because you're right. working all the time. It's not heaven to you, it's a job. Yeah. But maybe a you don't know the fact that he's a Mormon. What? Maybe you have 
a problem with the fact that he's a Mormon. I don't. I have a problem with all religions. That's what I'm saying. Oh. I'm saying I'm actually defending the Mormons in a weird way. Right. Because I'm telling you, the more people find out, people don't know about Mormonism. When they find out, they will be amazed at how weird it really is. <laughs> it's I, I, you can go and watch this on YouTube, but I think what I wanted to point out from that, this woman said, you have a problem with him being a Mormon, right? That's incredible. She was the CEO of Hewlett Packard. And she's sitting there thinking, you have a problem with being being alone. That he thought that uh, Jesus came to North America. And why is it that people don't ask this guy, do you actually really believe that Jesus came to North America? And it's Morton's fault. If he did believe that, you know, he came to North America, then... And if he, he doesn't, and he, he's lying, are these the credentials for someone to be president to the United States? And that applies as Mayor says, to basically everything. If you go on YouTube again, uh, probably you, sh you can actually watch a lot of people talking about some Im important issues. And um, I think it's quite interesting to, to do that. Let me t take another one, basically. If you believe, as I do, that the purpose of religion is to suck all the pleasure out of life and spit it in your eye, well then you might have trouble thinking of anything positive to say about it. But I think it's important to try, if just for a sense of balance, and so that's why I've decided to think of one or two nice things that I can say about each of the main religions. In particular, the three monotheistic dogmas which have plagued, I mean, enriched our civilization for so many centuries. The three desert dogmas, as I like to think of them, because between them they've done so much to make a desert of the human soul. Let's begin with Islam. Now, in the current climate of intimidation and special pleading, you might think it would be hard to think of anything nice to say about Islam, but I can think of a couple of things. Firstly, I like their symbol, the crescent moon. I find it much more attractive than the cross, possibly because it doesn't have anybody nailed to it. And also, whenever you see a large mosque full of worshippers praying together, I like the synchronized bowing. I think that's always very well done. Also, of course, we have radical Islam to thank for showing us so graphically what a huge problem religion can become. If not for all the hysterical, self-righteous bullying that we've been subjected to in recent years, many of us might still be laboring under the illusion that religion is relatively harmless. So thanks to Radical Islam for the heads up on that one. <laughs> what I like most about Christianity is that it's not Islam, which is a major bonus in my opinion. Unfortunately, it is Christianity, which kind of takes most of the shine off it for me. I like the fact that the Inquisition is over and that Christian history is no longer being written in blood. I think that's quite a positive development. And recently, the Vatican hosted a conference on astronomy, which is quite remarkable given their track record in that area. I mean, it was only a few years ago that the Catholic Church finally got around to admitting that Galileo may be right after all about the Earth traveling around the sun. And that, too, was a very positive thing because they didn't have to say anything. They could have just kept it quiet, and then millions of Catholics would have been none the wiser. And, of course, you can understand why it took them 500 years to get around to it. With a question of that importance, they wouldn't want to rush into any hasty judgments and risk making fools of themselves. What do I like about Judaism? Well, not a great deal, to be perfectly honest, except for the fact that it doesn't preach itself into your face every chance it gets, which I think is a very underrated quality and one which should be widely imitated. Also, of course, the Jews, they've got the oldest of the three dogmas, and yet they're the ones who are still waiting for their Messiah. And you just know damn well that if he ever did turn up, they'd nail him up for blasphemy again, which is an idea that's always quite amused me. Because one thing we should remember is that religion can be a source of great humor, as well as great tragedy, guilt, self-loathing, fear, misery, cruelty, and pain. Outside of the Abrahamic triangle of insanity, what I like about Hinduism is that they're vegetarians, which I think is a very civilized way to be. Uh, I think they go a little overboard with the cows, but that's their business. But mainly because Hinduism is not actively trying to take over the world in the way that Islam is, and I think that's a very attractive quality in any religion that's 900 million strong. I, I thought I'd show you. It's, it, Look, he's got 28 of them on there. Go and see him uh, if he's still alive. Okay. Um.